Hello. I have asked a few brothers in Christ to uh, uh, join me in a discussion on prophecy and prophets. They have both accepted the invitation to participate in this discussion. So uh, you will find them uh, on here as uh, Sander Klarheis 777 and Abel Waterwalker of A Mighty Wind Ministries. Now we're going to be doing a discussion once again on prophecy and prophets. I looked up the scriptures using the blueletterbible.org website and if you'd like to check out and see these references just type in in the search box type in prophecy and you'll find the same uh, references that I pulled up. Okay, Now I want to just elaborate on what I feel the Lord is saying on prophecy uh, based off of the scripture verses that I had studied out. I stayed up all night last night looking at these verses and let me tell you something, I had a blast because uh, I learned some interesting things about prophecy and I hope that you enjoy this segment on prophecy. Now, it is essential when we're talking about prophecy to uh, understand that God does not change. Now, some of you may say, well, God is a God of wrath in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, He's grace. Well, I only have one thing to say to that, and that is this, that while God's character does not change, and has not changed from time immemorial, the way he does things does change. For instance, we see an example in the book of Jonah, uh, the book of Jonah where Jonah prophesies that in 40 days Nineveh is going to be overthrown. And it was a prophecy from the Lord. But Nineveh did not get destroyed. We see in that God's character that he is love. And he deserves to be reverenced and respected because he is love. And he, as far as I'm concerned, is the only is the one and only true God. Second Peter 1.20. Now I'm going to start with verse 19, get the context. And we have the word of the prophets made more certain, and you will do well to pay attention to it, as to a light shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. That word moved in the Greek translates to be carried. And I might add, quite literally, too. God carried the prophets to different places and uh, he showed them different things both in the physical world and in the spiritual world. These things happen because God wills it to happen. It happens in accordance with what the Holy Ghost wants. Now yes, there is a process of refinement that you have to go through before this does happen, but uh, I'm just telling you that this happens on God's terms. Okay, These prophecies that the prophets made, and the major and minor prophets, they didn't just cook up their own thing. Okay, They got it straight from God. And this is why the Bible is different from other religious texts that are out there. And I can tell you right now, having read some religious texts and stuff, that I know uh, the Bible is different when you read it. It just is, because it's inspired by God. And that's the reality. It's not fiction. It's not just a story. It's reality. 
Many of us have been taught that because people prophesy, they're filled with the Spirit of God and holy and righteous and blameless and so on and so forth. Well, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 2 puts a hole in that myth because that's just what it is. It's an illusionary myth. It says, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Now, I can, I can um, have all kinds of devotion to God that I want. Uh, I can pray three times a day, uh, fast, God knows how long and how often, but if I do not love God, what good is it going to do? The Bible makes it absolutely clear that reverencing God is the beginning of wisdom. Beloved, let's love one another because love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God, knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So, to wrap it all up, Saul prophesied three days butt naked in the middle of the street. That doesn't mean he was a holy man of God. Does it? I don't think so. You can prophesy out the wazoo, but uh, that doesn't mean that you love other people. You can be harsh, judgmental, uh, impulsive, and uh, just say things that just have a way of offending people. And it's not because you're naturally straightforward. It's just that you think you're doing God a service by going around offending other people. Well, the Bible has something to say about that. It actually says that if you cause a new believer, those or those who are weak in faith, if you cause them to stumble, it would be better for you to have a millstone hung around your neck and that you be thrown into the sea. Okay? If you uh, offend someone who's weak in their faith, God's going to hold you accountable for it. Reverencing God is the beginning of wisdom. But if you cannot love your fellow man, how can you love God? Daniel 9.24. Lots of people like to study uh, prophecies in the these kind of prophecies and um, in Revelation and things like this. But they do not... Stay, and, and then they only read the book of Daniel. And they think that the book of Daniel is the only book that they need to look at and consider when dealing with Revelation and the Apocalypse of John. Let me make it absolutely clear to you today. You cannot and you will not understand the book of Revelation if you do not have uh, any kind of understanding in the major and minor prophets. So my advice to you if you have not done it already, is to uh, go back and uh, study them out, study the symbols, study the words and how they're used. Study that. And don't just stick your nose in the Bible. You need to be able to look outside of the Bible as well. There's excellent books on Hebrew culture written by uh, Christian authors. Uh, you should also not be so freaked out about the world that you don't uh, browse through secular resources as well. Because you know what? God has given the things that are in this world. He's given them to the saints, hasn't he? But of course. So what's wrong with uh, learning? Seventy-sevens are decreed for your people in your holy city to finish transgressions, so on and so forth, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Now, uh, later on, the angel says, seal up this prophecy, the prophecy here in the book of Daniel, because uh, it is for a future time. It is yet to be revealed. Prophecy is unfolding. It's like those fold-up books, okay? It's always unfolding, okay? We can say all we want that Christ fulfilled um, all the prophecies in the Old Testament. The truth is, is that Christ fulfilled the prophecies concerning the uh, coming of the suffering servant. He is not returned as conquering king. He, the Antichrist hasn't, the, the false shepherd, 
uh, has not appeared yet. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the major and minor prophets, you understand perfectly what I'm talking about, uh, the reference and allusion to, if I come, I came in my Father's name and you did not receive me, you, when another will come in his name, you will receive him. Christ is alluding to a prophecy, once again, about the false shepherd. Okay, once again, it's a symbol for the Antichrist, and it's in the major and minor prophets.